I did some fragrance shopping this weekend and I even got a boo basket. But let's talk about these new fragrances because I got some thoughts, um, some good and some bad and mm, questionable things are happening. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Lisa Maria here. Yes, we are back in the saddle. Feels good to be here because I smelled some newness and some oldness, some designer, some niche. I got some thoughts, you all, but let's get on into it. Lipstick of the day today, everyone. I went mauve here because it is fall. It's almost Halloween. <laughs> Everybody was dressed up in costumes, so yeah, I'm all the way in the spirit. So lipstick of the day is MAC Mayor Lipstick, an oldie but goodie. We love it. It's kind of like a My Lips But Better color. And yes, I did put a gloss over it. This is the Fenty one. Mauve Wives is the Fenty gloss that I put over it from their cream line, a oldie but goodie as well. I love this. And yeah, that's the lipstick of the day. Next up, we have Fragrance of the Day. Now this is one that gets a lot of love here in the community. And this is one I felt like wearing because there's an almond note in it. This right here is from the house of Unnui Nomad and this is Jardins de Mitzvah. I've had it for a while, but I felt like wearing it today because the weather is finally perfect for it. And I am enjoying this one. The rose and the dates and the almond in here. Yes, <laughs> that again is Jardins de Mitzvah from Unui Nomad is your fragrance of the day. And now let's get into my thoughts on these fragrances and I will show you what I picked up because of course I got something. <laughs> now the first fragrance is the newest release from the House of Parfums de Marla. We know Parfums de Marla, we love it. It gave us Delena, it gave us Valaya, we love those. Yes, however, they gave us the new Palatine for the ladies. Finally, it's been like what? It had been almost a year and a half since we got a new scent, so it was overdue. Palatine is the pretty purple bottle that's out now. I was finally able to check it out because I have been hearing many mixed reviews on this fragrance and I was like okay I'm gonna smell it for myself before I weigh in on it y'all it has notes of mandarin bergamot and pear heart notes are violet petal lavender floral bouquet and then base notes we have our sandalwood patchouli musk and vanilla so looking at this I'm like okay it is a feminine scent maybe kind of bright especially with the mandarin and the pear violet petal okay it's gonna be floral it is a feminine fragrance so okay cool y'all i sprayed this on paper and i continue to smell it and inhale it let it dry down all of that this is the most generic fragrance ever and the issue i have with that is if you all know parfums the marley pricing then you know this scent retails for 375 dollars yes 375 american dollars when i say i have designer fragrances that have way more personality and character than this I don't understand what we did here. It's like, how do we go from Valaya to Palatine? I don't understand. I do not get what we did here. So this one for me is a huge disappointment and a big fat no. Palatine is an absolute no for me. This one I do see being more suited for the springtime, but I don't even know if I even want to retry it again. I probably will. But right now, I don't need a bottle of this. I'm good on it. <laughs> now, the next fragrance is one that it came out. Well, it's not new per se. It is new, but it is. It's a re-release. That's the best way to put that. It's from the house of MFK, Mason Francis Kirk Jean. You know, the person that gave us Baccarat Rouge, all that. This is APOM or A Part of Me. And I'm noticing they put an APOM Femme on it because apparently I think they're going to re-release the men's version. That's what I'm hearing rumblings of. But APOM for short. So this is a scent. People kind of didn't talk about it. It was kind of like, oh, okay, that's cute. And, you know, I saw a little bit of buzz for it but it came and went it was one of those kind of fragrances so with a palm it has notes of from what i'm seeing from the brand we have orange blossom in here it's supposed to be ambery forger of a type of scent we also have ylang ylang in here we have lavender and we also have vanilla in here too and some musk so looking at this i said hmm Lavender is definitely having a moment for 2024. I just want to say that right now because we often talk about vanilla and cherries and things like that, but we need to talk about how lavender is really the it girl note for this year. I'm just saying maybe that's a topic for another video, but I just want to point that out. But this scent, I was like, okay, oh, lavender orange blossom. I'm like, mm, is this going to give me why it says Lieb? You know, Lieb, the scent we know and love that has a million flankers. Because I'm like, okay, we kind of already got enough for the orange blossom vanilla thing going. Y'all, I smelled a palm. This is so beautiful to me love at first sniff love at first sniff it's clean and fresh but at the same time there's still a creaminess to this scent to me this would be what i consider a quiet luxury fragrance this is an excellent travel fragrance it's very much if i know i'm going to shop and say like higher end stores boutiques and maybe i'm going to a new area they don't know me but you also want to give that like aura of i'm not new to this even though i might be new to this location but i'm not new to shopping here it's that type of fragrance for me. It's giving I'm used to something. And I like that. So MFK is a palm. This is a yes. I do think this is full bottle worthy. And I think it needs to be talked about more. I recognize that this isn't the normal DNA that people get excited over. 
but to me this is quiet luxury the epitome of quiet luxury so a palm again is a yes the next fragrance we're going to talk about is also a new release for 2024 this is from a designer house yes this is from the house of hermes or hermes if you want to be bougie <laughs> so this is the new Berenia fragrance now this is one that really has not gotten a lot of buzz at all i've only seen it only because i was searching it out but it wasn't all in my face we all know certain fragrances get more buzz than others it's just the nature of the bees but this has one it caught my attention i said because okay hermes does not to release a fragrance every day male or female it does not matter they don't churn out a whole bunch of fragrances and i have to say like the head elf he wears hermes fragrances that's his favorite so i'm like okay i'm gonna at least tap in because he is who put me on it so this one is geared toward the ladies it's meant to be modeled after one of their leathers so i'm like okay it's going to be a more leathery type of scent so let's get into the notes because it's actually not a complicated note fragrance for my opinion so we have top notes of miracle berry and bergamot and then we also have white ginger lily and then the base we have patchouli akagaya wood and oak so here's the thing when i saw the base notes i said oh wait a minute this is not going to be a light scent it's not because akagaya wood i have it in two other fragrances that i own that is Killian's Woman in Gold and also Parfums and Molly Valaya. And both of those since last because of that note right there. Akigaya Wood. All right, and then Patchouli, we all know Patchouli. Patchouli gives everything warmth. Y'all, this fragrance, I smelled it and I'm glad my mom was with me at the time. We were sampling this so that way you have like a differences in opinions, age groups, all that. I was like, I don't know when I first smelled it. My mother was like, oh no, I love this. This is everything because there is a more vintage quality about it and my mom tends to like more vintage style of scents. I mean, I think she's a Chanel girl, okay? She is. So then I was like, I don't know. I gave it five minutes, 10 minutes because again, we're well versed enough to know with fragrances. Sometimes you need to let it dry down. Maybe you might like it later on. 10 minutes later, I was like, oh, I see the vision. This scent is not a lightweight. Berenia is a beast and it does not smell like every other generic designer on the market right now. It's not orange blossom. It ain't bourbon vanilla. It's not neroli. All of the normal pink juices we normally see this one is a heavy hitting scent and honestly if you'd have told me this was a niche fragrance i 100 would have believed you but no this is a designer so i have to say hermes you did your thing with this because she is unique and this is honestly kind of unisex too it's not even though it's technically a feminine fragrance that's how it's marketed men could wear this scent because of there's a slight leatheriness to it because again Berenia is one of the leathers they use that house I'm here for it. 100% here for this scent. So Berenia is a yes from Hermes. Now this next fragrance I have heard so much hype about and I have to thank one of my mutuals here on YouTube, Tresses of Alexis. Hey girl, how you doing? Because you have been talking about this fragrance from the house of Donna Karen or Karan. Some people say it like that, but Donna Karen, y'all, this scent, everybody was like, you need to try it, you need to try it. And I'm like, okay, I keep seeing this scent because it came out, I want to say last year or earlier this year, but people are still loving it. So that always tells me, okay, it's not I just how people actually like the scent right this is donna karen's cashmere collection and in particular the cashmere and palo santo fragrance i finally got my nose on it you all have been asking me to smell it yes we did i do listen to y'all i do read the comments so let's get into the notes y'all with donna karen's cashmere and palo santo so this is supposed to be an ambery woody fragrance and i said okay so we have the top note is golden peach the heart note is labdanum absolute and then the base we have palo santo vanilla bean so i said okay this is going to be a peachy ambery scent but also kind of woody because Apollo Santo is a wood so I'm like okay let's see what happens here and you can definitely tell that Donna Karen is stepping it up and going a little bit more niche with this fragrance just based on this nose because you don't normally see this in a designer fragrance so I'm like okay I was willing to check it out so I smelled the fragrance and I said okay I get why people like this and I'm gonna tell you why because a lot of people have compared cashmere and palo santo to this fragrance right here that just came back and is now permanent yay this is kayali's the wedding silk santal this fragrance right here people have compared it to this scent, just saying it's a little bit more richer darker version of it and i somewhat agree i can tell they're related but to me i figured it out y'all it took me getting back home and still sniffing my scent strip a while later and i was like wait a minute I know what it is. This smells like two fragrances that I enjoy. It's really, yes, Silk Santal and in my opinion, Valentino's Donna Born Aroma together. It's like these two had a baby in my opinion. And I love both of these fragrances. Not like love. So 
The fact that I figured it out, I said, you know what, I enjoy this. So for that reason, Cashmere and Palo Santo is a yes to me because of the fact it reminds me of these two fragrances, but just layered together. Of course, there's a more peach note in here versus bourbon vanilla and blackberries, black currant, excuse me, black currant is the note. <laughs> so yes, Cashmere and Palo Santo from Donna Karen. This is a yes for me and I will be picking it up, especially since I'm seeing that Macy's and Nordstrom things have a sale on it right now. We love a sale. <laughs> Now the next fragrance we have is one that it's kind of been available but not. So I've seen it in some stores based on social media but in my area it wasn't on counter but yeah I finally was able to get my nose on it. So next up we have Valentina's Born in Roma the new gold edition. I'm talking about the ladies version because yes there is a men's version but again we're talking about the ladies version. So it has notes of mandarin, gardenia and then the base we have coconut. Of course the bottle is gorgeous. Valentina is going to give you a pretty bottle. I mean I still have my bottle of Valentina right here the original Born in Roma. We knew the gold I was like yes and you can tell they're trying to kind of, they're trying to keep the hype going like they did with the pink PP version that we all scrambled to buy which they really did sell out and I'm glad I bought it I had to stay up for it in order to get it but you know y'all have already seen the video on it I'm sure right but anywho born in Roma gold this one is cute it's cute it's lighter fresher to me however I feel like if you have like the green extravaganza version I don't think you need this one because the Green Extravaganza version is a more fresher, happier take on it, whereas this one is also still in that same category. So it's kind of one of the things of if you have one, you don't need the other, unless you're a collector, because I know some people really do collect all the Valentino bottles because they're pretty. I get that. But I didn't feel like, oh, I need this because the Donna Born Aroma DNA is definitely in this new gold version. So I'm like, okay. And I already have the others. So I'm like, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it. And it only comes in one size too, which is the 100 mil. And I'm like, I really don't need a big bottle of it. Maybe if they had like a 50 mil or a 30 mil, maybe, but I don't need it. So it's enough for me because it's not doing enough for me. It's just not. <laughs> the next fragrance we have is super hype because I was able to go into one of my niche fragrance boutiques that I enjoy. And I was like, okay, let me check this out because they had it on display. This scent was so viral two years ago and people are still talking about it, particularly whenever it gets around cold weather season, autumn, going into holidays, you're going to see it. And I'm talking about Mason Mataha's Escapade Gourmand. I finally got to smell this. So yes, I've seen it, considered buying it before in the past and all that. However, I refuse to blind buy this scent. I just I'm not doing it, especially the fact that this is a vanilla fragrance because that's why everybody loves it. It's a vanilla fragrance that's over $200 and I'm sorry, it's got to be good for me to do that and I'm just like, I'm not pressed enough to blind by it. I just wasn't. So I was able to smell it. It has notes y'all of black sugar, vanilla, tonka bean, and musk and I gotta say, I expected to be disappointed by this fragrance and I loved it. This was a love. And again, my mother was with me at the time. So she smelled. She said, well, that's really nice. She said, I can see you wearing it for the holidays or something. She said, I like that too. So it always, you know, helps. You know, we get another opinion on it. But this one is sweet. It smells like creme brulee, like everybody says it's supposed to. It, it just smells delicious. It smells delicious. I feel like if you like a more cafe, but you don't want the coffee and the amaretto liqueur aspect of it, but you still want something in the same family, I think you will also like Escapade Gourmand. That's what I'm getting. And I do enjoy a more cafe. Y'all know that I recently hauled it. So Escapade Gourmand is worth the hype to me. This is a yes, this is a win. So if you end up seeing it on my channel, <laughs> You know why. <laughs> this next one, I've talked about it. I actually put it on my fall wish list before, but we're going to talk about it again because I smelled it again, just trying to see do I still want it? You know, you have to check in and be sure. So this next fragrance you all is from the house of Initial Parfums and this is Paragon. So the reason I wanted to re-smell Paragon and make sure I liked it is because I recently played in my sample of Rehab and I wasn't sold on Rehab. I love Must Therapy. Y'all know that. I did a review on it. But Paragon, I've been enjoying every time I smell it, but I wanted to make sure that I'm still here for it because it has a beautiful plum note and it's now fall. So you all, I smelled it. It still is. So we have top notes of bergamot, white sage, and lavender. Then we have plum, Paolo Santo, and then we also have black pepper. And then in the base, you all, we have sandalwood and agar wood. So this is a woody, aromatic scent, but the plum in this makes it sweet. And to me, this is a fall fragrance. Fall, winter, cold weather scent is what it is. And in my opinion, it's perfectly unisex. 100% down the middle unisex. And it's potent. It took over my shopping bag I had at the time. It just smelled like Paragon. So I said, okay, the performance is there. It's definitely potent. Okay, it's giving niche quality and I'm here for it. So that is a yes. And so it's therefore Initial Parfums Paragon remains on my wish list. And then finally, I told you all this in my Sephora wish list sale video that I did talking about the upcoming holiday savings event. 
You all, I told you I wanted to re-smell Jo Malone's Ginger Biscuit. Cause I'm like, okay, I hated it last year, but maybe this batch might be different. I might have a different opinion on it because I am loving gourmands a little bit more than I used to. So I'm like, okay, I'm willing to try it again. Y'all know that's also why I do not throw away samples because I do revisit my samples months later and my opinion can change. Just put that out there. So with Joe Malone's Ginger Biscuit, we have top note of ginger, then the heart is roasted hazelnut, and then the base there is tonka bean. And if you know, this scent is a limited edition fragrance. It only comes out at the holiday season. And it only came back last year, because apparently before that, it was gone for like 10 years. So truly a limited edition fragrance. And then this year, I saw once October hit, it came back again on Sephora and Joe Malone's official website, but then it went away. Then I saw Sephora hit again, and now Joe Malone's website has it back on there. So I'm like, okay, I guess it is back for the holidays. Cool. I was able to go on Sephora to smell it, and let me tell you something. I am convinced this year's batch is a thousand times better than last year's batch because this year's batch i smelled it and immediately i had all of the memories of every single christmas growing up making gingerbread houses with my parents and cousins and things i got all the feels and all the memories after smelling ginger biscuit this year smelled it last year i ain't get nothing it was given water in a pretty bottle this year i got all the feels they said i'm supposed to get and i was like oh i love this i love this I love it. So that's my follow-up on Ginger Biscuit. This is a true ginger gourmand snack of a scent. I'm loving ginger this year and hazelnut too. This is good. So this is one that if you're like me that hated it last year, felt like it wasn't nothing but scented water in a bottle, I think you should try this year's batch, 2024's batch, because I feel like it's better. That's just my opinion on it. And now let's get to the part y'all really care about. And so what did you pick up? So I went to Sephora. Yes, and the thing I picked up, which you probably can guess based on my reaction, is Ginger Biscuit. Yes, I went ahead and got it because y'all let me tell you something. My sales associate I was working with, she had to dig to find this bottle. So that lets me know that the stock was low. And don't get me wrong, I know that we have the new sale coming up, the Sephora Savings event that I got another flyer for in my bag. And I talked about already, that's coming up on November 1st. I get it, but I'm like, clearly y'all don't have a lot of inventory of this scent. And it keeps doing this disappearing act so i said you know what i'm not even gonna play games i'm gonna go ahead and get it so yes y'all i picked up ginger biscuit and i'm actually gonna unbox it here in real time because i haven't and i love the holiday festive packaging on it oh there is my bottle gotta straighten up my little bow but there it is okay y'all they have it in here super smug <laughs> And there it is, my bottle of ginger biscuit. Okay, your bow tie is doing things, but anyway, it's cute. And here it is. It only comes in this big size, 100 mil size. I know if you order it off of, say, Joe Malone's website, they have little minis you might get as a free gift, but I just want to say this is the only size that it comes in, and I love it. So that's why I did it, y'all. This is so spicy and warm. Okay, this might end up being my Christmas fragrance. I'm excited i'm excited so yes now you all know my thoughts on these new fragrances and also you see what i deem is full bottle worthy and that is this beauty ginger biscuit so yes you're going to see it on my recommendations video for the sephora sale so mm -hmm. you know it's real i couldn't even wait you know it's real so let me know what you think about my thoughts on these fragrances do you agree do you love them do you hate them let me know i know y'all gonna do so anyway because i know the elves are opinionated drop your comments below and i will read them and respond when i can but until next time elves i will catch y'all in the next video bye y'all